some one, two, my eyes are In 2017, we saw the NFL go through some serious changes in the style of play that all the teams were playing. With the new rule changes that would benefit offenses, you saw more offenses in the NFL decide to go more towards a more pass heavy offense. But then there was the Philadelphia Eagles who said, no, we're going to go back to what this league was founded upon winning the battle up front of the line of scrimmage, running the ball down the team's throats, killing the clock, creating play action and playing some lights out defense. That's just the DNA that we have here in the city of Philadelphia. We love smash mouth sports. We love to be the enforcer. And now here in the NBA in 2019, we are going through a different change in style of play. We saw the Golden State Warriors for half a decade change the NBA and the, change, the way, change the NBA forever. We saw the NBA in put an emphasis on shooting the ball and specifically shooting the ball behind the three-point line. Three-point percentages went through the roof over the past couple years and the thought was, if you can't shoot the ball, you can't win basketball games. But the Philadelphia 76ers in 2019 are changing the model of how you play the game. Yet again. Or are they? As we are seeing from our Philadelphia 76ers through the first month of play, it seems like these guys Instead of using this formula that the Golden State Warriors slayed for the rest of the NBA, they're going back in time. The thought of having to shoot, to outshoot the other team with threes, this finesse style of basketball, the Philadelphia 76ers said, nah, we ain't doing this. And now we are seeing the Sixers change the, M the face of the NBA yet again, bringing some smash mouth basketball. Emphasis on defense, turnovers, not shooting the lights out. And guys, we are witnessing a new slash old brand of basketball that more than likely will change the game for the next couple years. Guys, I'm in Barcelo, Philly, uniting all through sports and culture here in the beautiful city of Philadelphia. And today, we are going to rewind back and look back at the week that was with our Philadelphia 76ers. Sit back and hang tight, because guys, you do not want to miss this. We're going to cover everything 76ers. Let's get this, guys. Yeah. Wow, what an exciting week the Philadelphia 76ers gave its fans. It all started off with a big bang brawl to a wild, wild shootout out in the desert against the Phoenix Suns. But guys, let's dive right into this. And we all want to obviously talk about the first game of the week. The first game of the week, which was against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Last week, guys, we talked about the Timberwolves coming into Philadelphia, doing that stupid video on the Rocky Steps. Carl Anthony Towns definitely came into the Wells Fargo Center a little heated to say the least. The Timberwolves were undefeated going into that game, and the 76ers as well as we all know were undefeated as well. But right off the bat, you notice that the Sixers had number one, better talent on the court, and number two, were more physical on the court as well. The Timberwolves at no point in this game, the Timberwolves right off the bat had no chance in this game. The Sixers had them where they wanted them, and that was at one point the Sixers were up by 20 points. That is right, 20 points. Obviously, you know, the everyone took away from this game was the brawl that happened with less than seven minutes left to play in the third. We saw Joel Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns go at it throughout the whole game, but tensions flared finally in the third quarter when Kat and JoJo got into a little rapping wrestling battle. There wasn't really any punches thrown. They were just trying to get each other to the ground, which was a little weird to be honest with you, but ball would end when Ben Simmons darted from half court to break up the fight, grabbing Carl Anthony Towns, throwing his ass to the ground and holding him in a chokehold to make sure he doesn't get up. Now, first off, let's talk about this, guys, because to me, guys, this demonstrate what kind of a team this is. This is JoJo and Ben, the two best players on our team, the future of our team. Darts over to grab Cat, and I remind you guys, Cat and Ben are friends. If you guys remember two years ago, <laughs> There was that one incident where J where Ben and Cat were playing Fortnite and it was a little late and Ben was telling Cat that, you know, stay up a little bit. You got the Atlanta Hawks next day. You don't have to really worry about that game. So I'm gonna let you be. You getting it? Hop on, man. Play one. You got time. Who do you play tomorrow? Hawks. Yeah, you got you got plenty of time. <laughs> 
So obviously we know there is a previous friendship between these two, but Ben put his team first and his teammate first and ran over and grabbed Cat, threw him to the ground. And then after that, Ben told Ben went up to Jojo and told him, yo, I got your back, bro. That gives me goosebumps, guys. Like seeing our two best players have each other's back. Man, that's going to go a long way. I'm telling you. After the after the fight ended, JoJo continued with his antics, mocking Cat while Cat was absolutely furious. JoJo knows how to get under people's skin, and he definitely got under Cat's skin. And then it all ended when JoJo mocked the whole Rocky Step thing when they were doing the whole undercut jabs, and it honestly was great. Unfortunately, JoJo would get ejected with Cat. Um, and we all were wondering how long these suspensions would be because obviously these guys would get suspended. That there was rumor that Ben Simmons would get suspended, but luckily JoJo and Cat got only suspended for two games while Ben only, Ben didn't get suspended at all, which was the most important part. Losing both those players for a couple games would have really hurt us. JoJo, however, would finish with 19 points, the most points by any player on the Sixers team on that day despite not finishing the game. It was a great performance by Joe. The Sixers would end up winning that game, 117 to 93, absolutely dominating the Minnesota Timberwolves and keeping us undefeated. But like I said, we would miss JoJo for the next two games and that would be a real test because the Sixers would then go on a four game West Coast road trip. Half Fest was going to be played without JoJo and you were going to face up against young upstart teams. We could have really used them, but the next game would be played up in Portland, a late Saturday night game up in the Rose City. Now, luckily for us, Elton Brand signed Al Horford in the offseason for moments like this. When you don't have JoJo, whether it be through injury or, God forbid, a suspension, you have Al Horford, a veteran guy who can do the damn job. Now, Horford would be crucial in these two games. And in this game against the Portland Trailblazers, guys stepped up and we even had an unlikely hero at the end. But this game would not be easy. Now Portland played us hard. Now this is a good team that can shoot the ball. And in this game, Doc shot a 57 field goal percentage while shooting 9% from the three point mark. That's what we had to deal with though in that night. And Portland at one point got on top of us by 21 points. And we somehow still grinded and crawled to get back into this game. And this game literally came down to the wire. And guys like Tobias Harris, guys like Josh Richards, James Ennis, Kyle Quinn, Al Horford, all shot big shots to keep us in this game. Guys stepped up and at the very end, an unlikely hero, Burke and Korkmaz, the guy who everybody wanted out of Phil. Didn't understand why the hell we still kept this guy. Brett Brown's words, he was trying to build a bomber. Now with six seconds left, Dame Lillard was driving down the paint when he found Anthony Simons in the corner. And Anthony, a rookie, was able to come up big for the Portland Trailblazers and hit a corner three to put the Trailblazers up by two points. And at that moment, everyone thought that the game was locked. Trailblazers had this. There was no way the Sixers were gonna get a, a late three ball with two seconds left. But then Al Horford was able to screen Cork and Cork Moss open and Cork Moss was, was wide open between the elbow and the corner of the three-point line and was able to knock down a wide open three to put the Sixers up. Like I, I can't I can't put this into words, guys. Like Cork Moss, a guy who everyone wanted out of Philly, didn't understand why he came back. My man has been quiet throughout this season so far. An unlikely hero stepped up. Guys, this is what championship teams do. Unlikely heroes stepping it up, making big plays for their team on the line. The Trailblazers would, would throw one last heat by Damian Lillard, but the Sixers would walk away from Portland with another win, leaving us undefeated. That was a hard fall game, and that was against a quality Western Conference team, a playoff Western Conference team. And the Sixers walked away with the win. But things did not get any easier there, guys, because the next game we'd have to travel down to the to Phoenix to face off against the Phoenix Suns, a team that is proved this season. Now, personally, me, I didn't realize the, the turnover that this team had. We obviously know they've been drafting high last couple years, not really hitting on those draft picks, but you know, they did bring in guys like Tyler Johnson, Aaron Baines, Kelly Oubre, Ricky Rubio. I didn't even realize these guys were on the Suns, but went down there with Al Joel and Vita again, and we faced off against a hungry young Phoenix Suns team. And they would give us a freaking game. Okay, Devin Booker was the usual Devin Booker. He would score 40 points on us, guys. 40 points. Not the 70 he put up against Boston, thank God, but 
Still, 40 points was led up by Devin Booker. And I'm going to be honest, watching that game, my man was possessed in that game. Devin Booker does show up when it matters most. And this Suns team is playing different. Monty Williams has these guys hungry. And it's a young team. This season, you notice that they don't let the bigger teams affect them. They don't care who it is. They want to play everyone. And they play them hard. And they played us hard. And one problem in this game for us was Ben Simmons wasn't on point to, on this game as well. He did not have his best game for the Sixers. Ben only had six points and had way too many turnovers for anyone's like. When you don't have Joel Embiid, we need guys like Ben Simmons to step up and put the game in, he, in his hands, sort of what Devin Booker did for the Suns. But there were bright spots in this game. Al Horford was ball lane. My man had 32 points, five boards and four assists, really stepping in the shoes of Joel Embiid in his absence. Tobias Harris also balled out as well with the 24 points and Furkan Korkmaz. After that Portland Trail Blazers game where he hit the game winner, my man came into Phoenix and put up 20 points against the Suns. Korkmaz is making his case for, for some more minutes. And that is huge because guys, you know, I love the whole defensive mantra that we have with the Sixers team this season, but you still have to shoot a little bit. And I would love to start Matias Thibault every game, but Matias really can't shoot. Being able to start Korkmaz who has shooting ability Will, will be huge if he can continue this play of course another player i want to talk about guys who in my opinion deserve some more minutes obviously we know shake milton is missing some time with injury he's going to miss at least another week but raul nato now raul to me is a much more glorified tj mcconnell guy is a scrapper guy will die for rebounds the guy will go for steals but the thing with nato is my man can shoot. We haven't really seen it in full effect yet. He only had two points against the Suns. But I wanna see a little bit more from Raul Nato. He's going up against, this week is the perfect opportunity to get to see some more from Raul. It definitely was a bright spot seeing him play hard for the Sixers in this game. This game would come down to the fourth quarter, but unfortunately the Sixers just did not have enough of the tank. They just played a hard game against Portland on Saturday. And like I said, the Suns team is no slouch of a team. They definitely came in ready to play and they did not care who this Sixers team was. They didn't care that they were undefeated. They took it to the Sixers from the tip off and played hard for four quarters. Definitely missed Joel Embiid in this game. Having Joel being such a dominant presence down in the post, I definitely think would have helped. And JoJo definitely has Aaron Baines' number. If we would have had Horford with JoJo, this game would have been different in my opinion. But guys, we can't be mad at our Sixers right now. They are playing great and they are playing smash mouth basketball. In the words of Joel Embiid, we are the new Broad Street Bullies. It's been over 50 years since we've seen the Broad Street Bullies and JoJo's trying to bring it back down to South Philly with these boys. Now the Sixers did suffer their first loss, but guys, we are still 5-1 and one, and we are tied now in first place with the Boston Celtics have really stepped it up and they are in their tie with us for first place. The Heat, man, Spolse and Jimmy Butler have a team on there. A bunch of guys are stepping up. Spolse seems to find players out of nowhere, pick them and plug them. And they look good right now. They are in third place right behind us. Definitely a surprise. Another surprise to me, still very early, but the Toronto Raptors. Without Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green are still in the mix of the Eastern Conference. We'll see what happens, but they might be able to make some moves in the Eastern Conference. Might sneak into the playoffs as well. We will see. I will definitely keep an eye on that. And the Charlotte Hornets have a winning record, surprisingly. Terry Rozier is carrying that team. All right, but guys, things don't get any easier for our Philadelphia 76ers this week. We have to finish out the rest of our West Coast trip. Tonight, Wednesday night, the Sixers are in Utah facing off against the Utah Jazz. Joel Embiid will be back. Donovan Mitchell, we know that guy, the 2017 Rookie of the Year. Is facing off against Ben Simmons. That's going to be fun. JoJo versus Rudy Gobert. Those two have gone at it in the past. So tonight's game against the Utah Jazz should be as advertised. Definitely check that out if you're not doing anything. Friday night, we are in Denver facing off against the Nuggets, a much improved Nuggets team. These guys look good this year. So that should be a great test as well. And then Sunday is military night down at the Wells Fargo Center. The Sixers will be back after their four game Western Conference road trip. They'll face off against the, the same Charlotte Hornets team that's looking good so far. But that will not be any cakewalk to say the least. But then Tuesday, we're facing off against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And since LeBron left, I really have forgotten about this team to be quite honest with you guys. They really aren't the same team. LeBron really loves to leave Cleveland and leave them in the shits. 
So Cleveland will be here Tuesday night. So it should be a fun-filled week of Sixers basketball. And I'm absolutely looking forward to it. But guys, let me know in the comments below. I want to hear from you. Where's your head at with the Philadelphia 76ers? Are you ex as excited as I am? Are you like some who are still hating on the Sixers? Think Ben Simmons is not legit? Upset because they're not shooting as much? Let me know how you're feeling in the comments below. But guys... Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you checking this out. Really trying to grow this channel. I really want to set my imprint in Philadelphia sports. Help me out here by growing this channel with liking this video, subscribing to this channel, hitting the bell button for the notifications, as well as sharing this video and this channel. But guys, I'm at Barcelona Philly, and until next time, always, 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 always trust the process. Nos vemos.